Hey guys, uh, Dr. Bloxham and Dr. Feller again. That's me. Um, we wanted to uh, make a video really quickly. One of Dr. Feller's uh, old patients uh, logged back into the Hair Transplant Network forums after a number of years uh, to share his opinion on the uh, FUE and FUT uh, ongoing discussion. And it's very interesting. So we wanted to kind of do a video response and sort of address uh, some of the points he's bringing up here. Yeah, which I happen to agree with. He makes some great points here. First of all, he writes, uh, I've logged back in after four years to give my opinion. I think you can get great results with either FUE or STRIP, but with uh, going with STRIP, it gives you better odds. And I agree with that. Yeah. That's exactly the, um, uh, the underpinnings of everything I'm writing. Uh, he writes, I generally do see better density results on this forum with STRIP. That said, uh, you take on the linear scar, which is probably fine, but could stretch. So you pay your money and you take your chance. That's true. Yeah. But not only are you taking a chance with your scar on FUT, you're also taking a chance with scarring on FUE. If you look at a recent post I put up, you can see clearly some pretty dreadful FUE scar results. But it continues, and it gets even more interesting, because remember, he is a patient of mine. He's a patient of mine I actually performed a thousand FUEs on, and now he's giving his honest opinion as to the results, and then we can discuss what happened. So he writes, I would imagine that impact of FUE on the donor is worse than strip, but if you don't need much work done in your lifetime, that might not matter, and he's correct. Smaller cases, I agree, are for FUE. Yeah. I'm really against mega session FUEs. Uh, I have uh, had FUE myself with Dr. Fellow with me. He said he had 1,010 grafts. Uh, he said the left side grew in, but uh, okay, but the right side didn't. I would estimate, and I am in no way an expert, that it was somehow 50 to 60 percent range. Was this Dr. Fellow's fault? No, I shouldn't think so. It could well be my physiology. Who knows? And to be honest, it really doesn't matter now. It's done. So before we continue with that, um, I'm not so convinced it's his personal physiology. Mm -hmm. I think it was the result of the FUE. If I had done a thousand and ten graphs on him via strip, I don't think he'd be saying one side was good, ostensibly 90 to 100 percent, and the other side was bad at about 50 percent to take his lower guesstimate. Um, I think uh, he would have had probably 90 percent and 90 percent or higher on each side if it was strip, but because it was FUE instead, he wound up with, let's say, 90% on one side and 50% on the other side. The bottom line is if you run the numbers together, basically you get 100% growth on one side and 50% growth on the other side. By the numbers, what does that say it's to you? 75, which I believe is what you've been saying the <laughs> right, entire that, time. So I've been that, saying. Right, that means my own patient here uh, got 75% success rate from his FUE transplant with me. So I've been saying this whole time that your average growth mm -hmm. from FUE compared to strip is 75%. And here's a man in the flesh who apparently I operated on, and I have absolutely no idea who he is at this point, but I operated on him with basically a thousand graphs, and by the numbers that he's giving, 75% mm -hmm. grew, it was about 750 grew. So this is nothing if not consistent and supporting what I'm saying about FUE having lower growth yields, no matter how well it's done. Well, obviously the reason is that some of these graphs were injured during the FUE process. I mean, there's your beginning and end. That's what I've been saying, even in my own patient. Now, for somebody to claim that, well, in my office, the FUE would have grown better. Well, to make that claim, you'd have to show two things subjectively. Because anybody could say, well, I'm better than this guy or worse than that guy. But you have to show two subjective, uh, two objective things, not subjective things. One, you have to prove you have different instrumentation that allowed you to do a better job. Or two, you have to prove that you had a better or more refined technique. And the technique I use is the one that I've been you know, showing for years online. Uh, a very refined, very paced uh, method of doing it. I don't spend five minutes pulling graphs out. If it takes me five hours, then that's what it takes, and I will pull them out. And I know when I pull them out that they're safe mm -hmm. and that they look good. Everyone's inspected under the microscope. If there's anything that doesn't belong on the graft, it gets trimmed away. So for somebody to claim, well, I would have done better, you have to show either better technique or better instrumentation. To date, folks, no one has done that. Nobody has shown anything better in terms of instrumentation or in terms of technique. Since I brought up follicular um, perforation, it's got to be 10 years ago now, and uh, my relieved punches, which decrease the amount of torsion when you're spinning the graft, uh, when you're spinning the punch around the graft. This thread has been made into fellow versus FUE, which isn't really fair. Thank you. Um, 
as if you look back over the last decade, he has done more than most to try and progress yeah. things. And then he writes, isn't it nice that we have a number of experts who will give their view on this forum. Kudos to Feller, to Voorhees and Body. And absolutely, I want to say kudos to, to uh, Voorhees and Body as well. Because if for nothing else, they showed up. Mm -hmm. The others didn't. And, and there's 40 plus thousand views on this thread to date. And no other FUE practitioner showed up except for these two.